So here's an example of way too overly aggressive cops and why we have militarized cops. We live in a hyper aggressive military society and it, this is astounding. A 12 year old girl started playing with a dog and a deputy punched her in the face, Texas cops say. This is at a barbecue in Austin, Texas, right? Here's what happened. It was shortly before 8 p.m. on March 3rd when Sheriff's Deputy Jack Danford was sitting at the back of a restaurant with his daughter and her boyfriend um, when a 12-year-old girl and a small dog were running around near them, according to uh, an affidavit obtained by Fox 26. I guess that's a local channel. The deputy picked up the dog and petted it before putting it back down, a witness told the police. But when the began playing with the dog, the deputy alleged jumped from his seat, tackled the girl, and began punching her in the face again and again. One of the things we need to address is that cops I'll read more. <laughs> I seen him on top of her. He was hammer fisting her. It was UFC style, said Russell Cope, the victim's stepdad. Witnesses surrounded the man and tried to pull him off the girl. Cope, who was delivering wood at the time, punched the man twice in the face, but it had no effect. I was punching him and it wasn't even phasing. It was doing nothing. So he said he pulled back his foot and clocked the deputy with a steel toe boot. I went whooping on him and I knocked him out cold. <laughs> Police came and, and arrested Danford after a brief struggle. I was shocked because I knew he was a detective and I thought that they were held to higher standards and that there was no way this could happen, especially a 12-year-old girl, said the restaurant manager. The girl's family said they had never met the deputy before. Officers noted that, officers noted that the officer had a strong scent of alcohol on him when they arrested him and told his daughter he'd been drinking. So that means you beat up a 12-year-old girl when you've been drinking? Man, I used to drink. I never beat up a 12-year-old boy or girl. Yeah, he's been charged with police intoxication, risk just resist, and injury to a child. The deputy said he's been, f that Cody fired the deputy, the uh, uh, sheriff, the sheriff fired the deputy and there's a price to pay. Uh-huh. We'll see what happens. Here's one of the things that we need to talk about um, with police reform. One of the things is that cops, this is horrifying. This guy, fuck him. Not only do he need, he needs to go to goddamn jail. Needs to go to jail. Um, all these black men that were killed, unarmed black men that were killed by cops and then were acquitted, it's awful. So we have a horrifying, horrifying system. One of the things that needs to change is cops are have to handle really awful situations. They have to see the worst in people. And then there's no, there's no, there's no constructive, healthy way for them to deal with this. So their mental health is really at risk. It's the same thing with, with combat vets coming back. We're trained them to kill. We trained them to, we're training our cops to just go out and just be a hammer, man. Just, you know, and then when they see awful things, I have a friend of mine who's a cop and he was telling me some stuff, you know, that he's heard judges talk about a woman who drowned two of her children in a bathtub, like small children, and then and then pleads the insanity plea. And when she's granted it, she cheers in court and this judge has to see stuff like that. So what are these like judges and cops? They have to see first response, they see really awful stuff. And if it's not being dealt with, you need a therapist. They need professional help to deal with this stuff. Cause if you're dealing with it with booze, then you're gonna go, you're gonna lose your shit. And if you're just told to suck it up, man up, this is what creates an environment of toxic masculinities for several reasons. When we have poverty, the richest country in the history of the world, and we're not addressing real social issues, right? Eight years of the first ever black president. Was the black community, was life in the inner cities drastically improved? Nope. Nope. 
when you have 5.2 million foreclosures and people lose their homes and their abilities and we ship out jobs because of stuff like TPP and NAFTA and we de deregulate the banks, right? And we are this violent, brutal culture, then that's how our Therese police are, are, are trained. I'm not excusing this guy at all. Fuck this guy. Fuck any cops that abuse their job. Fuck them. But we're also throwing cops in to handle really awful situations. We don't have social services. We're not dealing with mental illness. We're not dealing with um, addiction. Addiction is a, ment is a health issue. It's not a criminal issue. And then cops are thrown into it and then they got to deal with these awful situations and then they're, they're violent and they're trained to be violent and, and aggressive and militarized. And then we act shocked when this happens. Are there good cops out there doing, yeah, there are, there are, for sure. But the whole system needs to be overhauled because this, this kind of cops, I mean, I've told this story. I was jaywalking and I had a cop, bald guy, all yoked out, come out of his squad car with a gun. Like I ran out of a bank with a bag of money and a rifle for jaywalking, for jogging across the street in North Hollywood, going to a friend's play. On Lancashire Boulevard, there was no car within 50 to 75 yards of me. Cop pulls around. I'm like, first thing popped in my mind, this guy's got PTSD and it's not being treated. And you're giving them badges and guns? Guy sees a puppy and then just starts beating on a girl? It's awful. It's awful. So this is just another example of why we need wholesale reform of our police system. We need to cut our military budget in half so we can put more money into social services and, and uh, jobs. <laughs> we stop spending all this money on the military and spend it on, on, on green technology. You might hear me say this like broken record, but it's all connected. It's all connected, right? If people had more jobs and abilities, if people didn't feel like there was no hope and they had to turn to drugs or alcohol and they had to, the crime was their only option, then we wouldn't have violence. If our cops were trained with more sensitivity and compassion, then we're given outlets, healthy outlets to deal with the awful shit that they see. We wouldn't have situations like this. Cops wouldn't need to be violent. If we did, got the if we um, got more guns off the streets, the more guns that are on the streets legally is more guns that we will have in the hands of criminals illegally. So then cops won't feel more threatened, more more crimes won't be committed, and cops could actually do what they're supposed to do, which is protect and serve, do community policing, not just jackboot, fist in the face, shut up, I've got a badge and a gun, type of policing. It's all connected, you guys. The American empire in its greed and its militarism and its corporate interests have created this environment so that at a little barbecue, you may think, what does this have to do with the oil industry, Graham, and the military industrial complex? A cop goes nuts at a barbecue in Austin, Texas. It is connected because this environment has been created on multiple levels. And when cops are constantly acquitted, when politicians and corporate leaders aren't held responsible, then this is what happens.